Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Black Sheep Overland Adventures. Um, some of you may know the Black Sheep has been out of commission now for a couple weeks. Uh, she, well, me, I uh, uh, got her in a hole um, up north, or actually was south of, uh, of the uh, Union Schoolhouse that uh, is known to be a bad hole to get in. And um, I knew to go around wide, and, and I didn't. So um, you know, we'll post a picture, maybe. I think I think Rachel's working on a video of that uh, mistake that I made. Uh, and she, she warned me, you can hear it in the video. Anyway, so what happened was uh, we thought that the, uh, the heater core went out, you know, after getting in that hole, but it didn't. We changed it anyway. <laughs> And uh, so it turns out it was the, um, the uh, oil filter slash oil, engine oil cooler. It is a um, molded plastic piece where your, where your oil filter cartridge goes in and that, then that goes all the way back to, um, to the back of the block there. And um, it's embedded within the, the valley of your engine below the um, the intake plenum uh, and it's you know designed to um, to cool the engine oil anyway the molded plastic piece uh, it's worn I probably stressed it some uh, my the black sheep has 143 144,000 miles on it this is a, a you know a common issue on them we bought a replacement part for it I'll uh, walk over here and show you that now I'll tell you that we we did use an Amazon part uh, didn't didn't use uh, you know a well-known uh, uh, parts manufacturer part but um, the one that we got here uh, I'll show you it's a uh, if you can see that a stint a Sentley brand and uh, uh, it did have a a four and a half star review the the half star taken off is because they are a little bit well they're it's a difficult uh swap some folks didn't like that and uh so anyway um uh but it had sold uh in the thousands four, four to five thousand of them have been sold with a four and a half star rating so we felt pretty good about it if not you know we're a shop here and we you know we uh run jeeps through a lot and I can uh, I can get a higher quality part if this one's low quality but we've inspected it it looks pretty nice uh, really the the machining the molding on it and everything seems real tight and clean and um, and then it came with all the things that you would need to make this change I'll, I'll give you a, a shot of it here um, and this is it would sit this is really upside down Way it would sit in your vehicle would be uh, would be like that. Your uh, cartridge, oil filter cartridge goes here, and then uh, the parts that could leak as far as your water, which that what, what was happening to us is we were losing uh, water as we were pouring coolant, you know, uh, water in to replace the low coolant. Uh, uh, it had uh, it started leaking back here around one of these fittings. But anyway, we did, we got the aluminum replacement. If you notice that that's a uh, cast aluminum, and uh, it came with all the um, the necessary uh, plenum gaskets. It came with an oil filter. Came with uh, new hardware uh, to bolt it on, and um, the the uh, filter cartridge is actually in inside here. We checked for that last night. So. Anyway, uh, I'll show you uh, what it looks like, what we did to, uh, to kind of get ready. We started getting ready last night. Uh, the black sheep, uh, we, we were uh, pressed for time. When we got home, it was late that night, you know, having to go get it, recover it on the trail. So it was still muddy as of yesterday. Um, we hadn't washed it, so we uh, did a real quick pressure wash job on it. Um, Tried to clean the engine bay up. The engine bay had gotten dirty from the, the mud hole I got in. I don't recommend mud holes. 
and we do our best to avoid them. But that that day, I I didn't uh, didn't take good advice, you know, from uh, from my uh, my navigator, Miss Rachel, and uh, you know, I'm paying I'm paying the price for it, and that's that's what happens, you know these. You know, their their jeeps are made for trail riding, and and uh, mud is about the worst thing you can do in muddy water. So if you can get around it, I recommend it, unless you're willing to pay the price. And sometimes that's the fun part of it too, the adventurous part. And we like the adventure here, the Black Sheep Overland Adventure. So I I'll, I'll put the Black Sheep here in the background. You can see what we did there is we went ahead and took the tires and wheels off of it. There you go and uh set it down on the floor on blocks we got some blocks under there i don't know if you can see that just put some four to four blocks down to get it down to where uh so you can kind of see you know we can we can get in here we're gonna we're gonna get in to the plenum and this is the upper plenum there's a, the lower plenum is down below here we're gonna wind up taking all of that out and we've got the uh, camera system set up up here we're gonna record this whole process for you guys and uh hopefully it'll help somebody and uh you know if you got any questions or comments please please leave us a comment if you like this content we'd ask you to please uh, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and uh check us out there's more we got more videos where we uh you know make repairs and uh we you know install spartan lockers and you know things like that of course we got a lot of trail video and stuff so uh y'all please subscribe and uh more to come on on our project on the black sheep here today so i wanted to give you an idea of the tools we're going to be using here so um required to do this job so we got, uh, you'll need three H drive, quarter drive, quarter extension. Um, these are the, uh, oh, the T, like this is a uh, T20. And I'm not exactly sure which ones we'll use, but uh, we've got, got some laid out. Three H extension for your three H. Uh, obviously always a 10 millimeter have a pair of pliers, you know, just for holding stuff, clips and things like that. Gonna need uh, a clip uh, remover here. Oops, knock all this stuff down. He's got it looking neat. Uh, reducers, impacts, and a uh, uh, Phillips screwdriver and a flat. And uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be more to come, and as we come across that stuff, we'll we'll inform you on what we're using. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, we're like so we've got uh, another camera set up up here on the hood, and uh, as we go along today, you know, we'll be monologuing, hopefully helping you guys along uh, with your project, and that's it. All right. Okay, well, um, I, I wasn't really um, present for this, but uh, Daryl, the shop foreman here at Black Sheep Overland Adventures, and Tyler, his uh, trusty helper today. My trusty assistant. Trusty assistant. <laughs> um, they have removed the upper plenum of this 3.6 liter Pinstar and a 2012 Jeep Wrangler. This is the Black Sheep. And um, what else, Daryl? Well, we, we're gonna go ahead and we'll put towels in here just to keep trash from getting in it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the coil packs and the spark plugs, get that out of the way. On this side here, while well, they continue to take some of the items off here and out of the way that we need to get the lower plenum off. 
because we're replacing this guy here. So we got a little ways to go. We'll probably put the GoPro on and maybe do a time lapse of kind of what we get out of the way here as we go until we get down to the to the lower intake. And once we get there, we'll uh, we'll stop and talk to you again. All right. Well, thank you, Daryl, and thank you, Tyler. You guys, good luck. I'm just like a bystander. And the black sheep, she's uh, raring to go. Uh, she wants you ready for this fix. Do you know what the gap is supposed to be in? So Daryl and Tyler, they have got the lower plenum out of this 3.6 pent star on a black sheep. And man, you talk about filthy. This is um, probably typical of a Jeep that has been off-roaded, you know, uh, muddy places and dusty roads and things like that. But I'm trying to get down here where you can see Man, you, this is just filth. All right. And now you can kind of see, it's like, it's like a Grand A long leg up in there. Yeah. Here, let's see. Yeah. Uh, it is. <laughs> 
So you can kind of see now the uh, see the oil moving. filter housing engine oil cooler. This guy right here. Trying to get in here. There we go. Yeah, Daryl pointed at it. Daryl's got his hand on it there. This whole thing. Yeah, that's what it looks like. You know, recessed down inside that valley of the engine. And you guys be careful. Uh, you know, now we have, we've been real particular about getting FME for material down uh, in those openings there. We're gonna stuff some paper towels down in there just to keep everything yeah, it, we, out of it. Basically. Might do it a little bit of a wipe down, but wow, yeah. After we get those in there, we'll wipe it down. When you pull those rags out, it should pull anything that fell on there out. But anyway, that's a good look at it uh, at this point. So we're going to go back to the time lapse and uh, we're going to get this off and show us taking this off and putting the new one on. Or at least getting that off and then we'll stop and, and show you what that looks like with it off. And then we'll probably do time lapse all the way back together. All right. All right. All right. guys the point of this uh, this this little piece of video here we want to show you what uh, plugs look like on a, a 3.6 pinch star out of a Jeep you know these are in all Chrysler it's a it was a workhorse for Chrysler chargers uh, 300s uh, some of the uh, minivans oh um, yeah you can see that so this one has 140,000 miles plus, less than 150, and those plugs are just gone. They're original, basically. They, yeah, that's the original plug. And, and the reason that happens, I'll tell you that, to change the driver's side, coil packs and plugs, is a Chrysler engineering nightmare so no one wants to do it you know if you take it to a shop they're gonna charge you $150 an hour to they, change that it's gonna be four-hour jobs to so change and plugs can turn into a lot of money yeah they basically have to take the upper plenum off which you see over there on the ground uh, the upper plenum off off of the vehicles this piece has to come off to get the ones underneath it over here which is on the on the driver's side so those don't really get changed very often very easily and if you're going to be in here you know changing an oil cooler i i can't recommend enough go ahead and change these we went ahead and did these and the coil the coil packs on each one so that when we put this all together we don't have to mess with that anymore this is basically it's tune up so um some of these were gapped they're supposed to be 49 to 53, and the gap on them right now, on this one here, was 70. So <laughs> it's pretty worn out. Uh, you definitely want to replace those if you're in here. I mean, if you're going to do this, do the whole thing. All right. And again, here's what it looks like again. I'll do one more shot of. Uh... So, and by the way, you have to have these like reverse Torx bits. I don't know if you can see that, maybe. Yeah, they're down here on the oil cooler. Yeah. So, you know, if you don't have those when you started this job, you're going to want to get them. They're, uh, they're, they're basically inverted Torx. So they're sockets. Yeah. Torx. All right.
Okay, everyone. And we've got uh, the upper plenum is installed. Um, here, uh, you guys might can see, this is the new oil filter housing, engine oil cooler, it's aluminum. Now the cap is still plastic, but but it's it's aluminum. And so you can see here that the, uh, the injector rail, uh, fuel injection rail is still off on both sides. And um, we've just got it's the upper plenum or the lower plenum uh, torqued down to mechanically sound. And that's what it looks like at this point. And if you don't know, here's the, uh, let's see, right over here. That's that's the injector the injection fuel, rail fuel rail right here. Yeah, you want to be mindful of these uh, um, these uh, rubber the O rings. Yeah, rubber so we uh, grommets. We lost one, taking it off, can't find it, so we had to go get one. So that's what we got a black one here. The rest of them are blue. And just be mindful of that. Sometimes it gets stuck in the rail. We this came off and we just couldn't find it, so we went and got got another. Yeah, one. it fell down in the abyss. It could be that our crankshaft is gonna make butter out of it or something. You never know. Anyway, that's what it looks like at this point. There you go. guys uh, so now you can see the uh, the lower plenum you know was uh, we had it in by itself just a few moments ago now we've got the uh, fuel, rail. fuel rail and the, by the way this fuel rail here it's really one piece if, if you don't take it apart you can take it apart and they did as one full piece <laughs> It's clipped together right here for the electronic side of it going that's, to that, the... That's a gas line right there. Yeah, it's fuel line. That's fuel. Uh, let's see. We never even actually took that off. <laughs> okay, so they just kept they just kept that connected. Yeah, just moved it out of the way. Anything else important about that part of it, Daryl? No. It just it's to be real careful with it because it's plastic, you know. Um, you don't have to take this off. The whole fuel reel will come off of the injectors or the injectors will come out with it, but you just put them back in. But that'll come off. The thing is, is the injectors have the, the slots on them to where they have to be at a specific angle when you push this back down on it. So all of them need to be lined up to get this to go down. Don't just put it on there and start torquing these down or you'll break it. Sometimes you have to give a little love tap. Yeah, you got to give a little love tap, kind of pop them back down. Them, them uh, O-rings are going to pop up in there. So um, it goes back together like that. I didn't take, we didn't take this off here at all. Like I said, we just picked it up, moved it out of the way. Put it back down on there. Okay. That's about it on that. All right. Next up.
Those guys' hands right. aren't there. <laughs> we got the upper plenum on now. And uh, so... So we're just kind of going through and connecting everything back together, making sure uh, that we've got all the electrical connections plugged back in, all of the heater hoses, all of the water hoses, all the vacuum hoses, all this stuff here. Um, making sure everything, you know, gets clipped back into its little slots and whatnot. Uh, we'll, we'll put this on, we'll plug all this back in, and, um, you know, we'll get this, this, this piece on here, and we're going to try to start it, making sure that everything is plugged in, and that it runs, and we'll give you a live video of that. But at this point, all we're doing is we're just putting this, this aluminum thing, you know, with the heater hoses, back to the heater hoses, you know, all this stuff here, plugging this back in, and that's pretty much it. Um, We'll give you the live video of, uh, of us starting it up to make sure we did the right thing. <laughs> so some of the things that are missing still is the uh, uh, right here. Yeah, the intake. The air intake goes around in front, goes over to uh, the throttle body. Oh, sorry. Oh, tower. Uh, that's, that's about, about it. it. That's the only thing that's missing visibly out of here. Everything else is pretty much on. We're just, we're just looking it back up. Yeah. Now, what about why you got this thing apart, Daryl? Yeah. It, is it a good idea? Like, are there things you did, for instance, any hoses you may have while you had it apart, went well, ahead and... So on that oil co cooler, the back of the oil cooler has this hose, um, which I don't think you can see it. It's up under here. Uh, it's this guy right here, this hose. Yeah. So this is water and it goes to your oil cooler. Um, I would recommend that if you're going to do the oil cooler, obviously do this hose too, because uh, it connects directly to your oil cooler, and you don't want to ever have to go back down in there again. I mean, once you do this, it's kind of like do everything that you can on the it's way out. It is a chore. Um, and if this hose, you know, uh, all hoses need replaced eventually, and if you haven't kept your, your radiator system clean and it's muddy or whatever, i definitely replace that hose as you go. Um, other than that, the only thing on the oil cooler, like I said, was the uh, was the little O-rings for the for the fuel rail. Just make sure that the, all those are on there when you put it back together, and that as you set the oil cooler onto the motor, that all your your gaskets on the bottom of it are still there when you put it down. The same thing with the lower plenum and the upper plenum. Make sure you got all of your your gaskets in place as you as you put it back together. Okay, thank you for that, Daryl. together when I say we really it's a Daryl and Tyler they were the ones that put it all back together took, yeah. took it apart and uh, we started putting a little water in it here because we're gonna flush it out once we run it a little bit we can get it to run we haven't tried starting it yet you guys are gonna be here with us we do yeah I think we're gonna do that now right yeah the key is in it all right 
Tyler, you see anything in there? Not yet. Hopefully I don't. Okay, here we go. Damn. Oh, okay, you know wait. what? Well, she started off really nice. Kind of pleased with that. May have to warm up some. Yep. We got a bleeder on that thing down there if we need to use it. I'm just going to go ahead and tap it for now. I'm going to let it get a little warm. Yeah. <laughs> 